Okay, so you have decided to start collecting Pokemon cards. And firstly, can I say, RIP to your wallet. <laughs> collecting Pokemon cards, it's not a cheap hobby, especially if you make some errors and stuff like that and you don't start off on the right foot. You can end up spending a lot of money where you didn't necessarily need to spend a lot of money. So for that reason, I thought I would put together some advice for you guys and give you my top five tips for collecting Pokemon cards. So jump into it. All right, yes, we are gonna run through my top five tips for collecting Pokemon cards. I actually did a video in the past of my top five mistakes people make collecting Pokemon cards, and I'll chuck a link in the description. I think I might have pinned it up here as well if you wanna go and check out that video. Today, we're gonna to focus on my tips for collecting. And if you enjoy this type of content, guys, do consider giving the channel a subscribe. We're trying to get to 30K by the end of the year, so fingers crossed we can do it. And give the video a like as well. It really helps us out and shows that I'm doing the right things that you guys enjoy so yeah go do all that stuff and let's jump into the first point of research so research what i mean by that is just learning a bit more about the hobby prior to going out there and actually spending money on it so watch videos i like mine watch some pack openings on youtube as well uh check out different websites as well like tcg players a really good one they have some good articles on there you can read into sets and stuff check out a website called Pokelector. That is a great website that gives you a visual rundown of every set there has ever been, English and Japanese as well. So if maybe you're looking into collecting Japanese over English and stuff like that, highly recommend checking out the Pokelector website. It's got them all down to base set and you can actually click into it and see pictures of each car, which is very, very cool. Also get out there and try and attend some events, head to some car shows. That is a really big one. The biggest one here in the UK is the London Card Show. They do a lot of events there. That is a very good one to go and meet people in the community. Another one would be my show. I put on a show called Collector Clash down in Brighton. Our next one is June 29th. So maybe grab some tickets. They'll be down below this video if you want to come to that. Check out the hobby over there as well and meet some people in the community. And uh, come chat to myself as well if you want to ask for some advice. I'm, of course, going to be there. Definitely events like that are really good to go to research the prices so yeah following on from talking about research i definitely think a big thing is to learn the price points of stuff and in particular seal product it's so easy for people to overpay for seal product because they don't know what they should be paying so one of the best ways to get an idea i'm not saying necessarily to always buy from here because it's always rp you don't tend to get deals but that would be the pokemon center so that's straight from the horse's mouth the wet prices on their site are never inflated due to there being a lack of stock they always sell everything at rrp and most stores other than pokemon center will go rrp or less if they're reputable. So if you see something selling for 50 pounds on Pokemon Center, if you can get it for that price elsewhere or slightly cheaper, you know you're not overpaying for that product. So a really good reference is definitely the Pokemon Center website for sealed product. When it comes to the actual individual cards, and if you want to just buy individual cards, of course, most people are going to buy from eBay or they're going to be buying from whatnot. And something that I recommend doing is checking out a website called TCG Player, another one I mentioned earlier, because they have they've got a massive database of people buying and selling on that platform but it's only american based but what it does is it gives you a good idea of market value of cards what people have been paying and stuff like that another way to do it is of course going onto ebay looking up the card and then putting in uh, once you've got the name of the card and that you can hit solds and that will show you what they've been selling for on ebay but for a really quick reference tcg player is definitely one that i use for a quick guide and then if i want to get more detail that's when i start looking at your ebay to see what people are paying there but uh, yeah, i really recommend bookmarking that tcg player for for a quick price guide where to buy yeah uh i will give you some advice on some places to buy because i think too many people make the mistake of buying off amazon it just seems like the easy thing to do there are horror stories when buying from amazon product being resealed being fake that is a big one a lot of people see something too cheap and it comes along and well it's fake you know it's proxy products and stuff like that so i actually highly recommend you go for some more reputable stores that focus mainly on pokemon and here's a few names of ones here so you've got the bigger ones here at the top chaos cards total cards they've been going for years they are huge um 
some of the biggest turning over like Pokemon and or TCG companies going. They don't just focus on Pokemon. But other than that, you've got some that I personally know the owners of. So Evo Cards, I used to part own it. I don't anymore. It's actually owned by some of my friends. They always have the product available at really good prices. Collector's Card House is owned by Pokey Chloe and Pokey Dean. Uh, some of you, you might have seen some of their videos in the build up to now. Recommend them. Card Galaxy is another fantastic one to buy from online because they also do a lot of the more obscure things like the other languages your japanese and stuff like that that is a fantastic uh shop to go and buy from as well recommend them now there will be a few more out there of course and i can't name them all but i will put some links in the description down below of a few different websites and i'm sure if any of you guys watching know some well they'll probably chuck some names in the comments as well so do read the comments and everything to see some stores to check out store your cards correctly what i mean by this is a lot of people get into pokemon they open a bunch of things and then they just like live on a shelf or back in the box that they got bought from stuff i think it's very important that you actually get yourself some products to help look after your cards from the moment you open them because if you do damage the cards or they get scratched, unfortunately they lose value and they lose their desirability. So it's very important to keep them very clean. And there are a few things I suggest for that. One is a storage box for your bulk. The other is getting penny sleeves for the cards. Then you want semi rigid top losers and finally a binder. I'll give you a few examples. So for bulk storage, you can get boxes like these. They're not too much. You can pick these up on eBay and Amazon and stuff, of course. As always, I'll stick the links in the comments down below. But these are great. I think this one's like 2,000 cards it can store. This is good for like your bulk or like let's say you put cards in top loaders they fit quite well in there. and then these don't fit semi-rigid which is what i use unfortunately they're a bit too big for it but if you want to store your cards in top loaders and penny sleeves and stuff they will fit in there very nicely and these are quite cheap you can get them in like packs of three for like 10 quid 15 quid, something like that then you're going to need stuff like this this is a penny sleeve so they come in packs the i use voltex product for all of my protection the best brand out there by far uk based brand i love the guys over there they're all awesome they attend like every card show so you actually get to meet the team that run the company which i think is really nice to be able to do but they are super popular they supply like a uh, deep pocket monster who's pat flynn and one of the biggest pokemon content creators out there the guy knows his stuff and he uses all voltex product but these are their penny sleeves super cheap to get packs of 500 and they're the perfect way you just literally take a card and uh, look, Cardiff Card Show promo. And uh, you obviously just put it in your penny sleeve, and there you go. And what's nice is they're nice and soft, so if you want to take the card in and out, it's not going to scratch the card. So penny sleeves are definitely one to recommend. And then after that, you've got these are semi rigid, but you can also use top loaders, which are a slightly smaller, more rigid one. The thing is, I prefer these due to the flexibility of them. So if you want to take a card in and out of it, you can just quite easily access the card without having to like bend the card or anything to get it in and out. And also if you want to grade your cards, uh, all grading companies prefer semi rigid again, due to the ease of pulling a card out. Top loaders are a bit tougher and you have to like bang them or you have to like screw up your nails to get in and you can damage the top of the card pulling them in and out. The only benefit to top loaders is if they fit in those boxes that I just showed you there. So it's weighing up where do you want to store them? Like semi rigid you probably have to store in a separate box. Top loaders can go in with everything else, so it's up to you. And then the final one was binders, guys. These are awesome. If you have cards that you really treasure and ones you want to display, you're going to want to get yourself a proper decent binder. This one from Voltex are their zip ones. Highly recommend these, guys. So it keeps all dust and dirt out. And then when you get inside, they've got these nice backed pages. And as you can see, guys, these are actually side loading, which means you put the card in that way. And it means if dirt does come in the top, I've seen binders where the top, they're top loaded like that they end up filling with dirt potentially. If they're kept on bookshelves, dust falls in. Side loading is the only way to go with your binders. They're much better. But the Voltex ones are amazing. They're lovely. I will put links to all of this, of course, in there. And oh, look, I've got some cards in this one. There you go, you can see. Best way to store like more, your more precious cards. Have a collection goal. And now I'm, so, I'm gonna say something to contradict myself at the start here, but I do think you should try a bit of everything in your first early days, but you need to very quickly decide on a goal and what you want to target because you could spend months just buying anything and everything that comes out or you see, and then you look at it and go, did I actually want this stuff? I think it's very important to target something. It took me a long time to decide my collection goals, actually, guys. I was collecting a lot of things out there because there's so much to collect. I now only collect Charizards, and that's because it's expensive. So I had to narrow it down to something just like that. But people out there do stuff where they collect uh, a type, like water, fighting, dark. People want to do master sets. So every set that comes out, they want to complete the whole set, start to finish. 
very expensive hobby to do that by the way and also if you do master set something there isn't much value in it after you master set that's the only thing people don't really care about buying master sets it's the challenge to complete it so if you complete one and expect to get lots of money you probably spent more to make that set than you're going to get selling it so just bear that in mind because yeah the part of the reason to collect is the challenge of trying to hunt down all the cards so they're tougher to sell but anyway master sets can be a fun one not a personal choice of mine you might chase after a certain type of pokemon you might be interested in the first 151 pokemon cards but look there is a lot of goals to have out there for it and i just suggest have a think see what you like and definitely try and set yourself a goal because in the long run you will save yourself money my final point guys and actually this is a really important one is have fun like honestly enjoy this hobby do not be ashamed of this hobby do not be embarrassed because you're feeling like you want to get back into pokemon but your friends don't do it don't worry there are millions and millions and millions of people out there that love and enjoy this hobby and are proud to be fans of pokemon and to collect it and a hundred percent you need to just be having fun doing this if you're stopping having fun then it's probably not the right thing to be doing for you. You really want to focus on enjoying it, meeting people in this community, community, atten community? <laughs> attending pre-release events, trying to get to card shows, get out there and meet people in hobby and just have fun. Honestly, it's changed my life collecting Pokemon for the better. And actually, guys, in a sense, saved me on a really bad depression spiral that was in when I first started this channel. And I owe so much of that to Pokemon and to this community. So honestly, enjoy it and embrace this hobby and just have fun with it and talk to people. You will love it. And if you're not loving it, it's not the right hobby for you. So there we go. They are my top five tips for collecting Pokemon cards. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope all the links and everything down below. It was a bit of a brain dump there. I appreciate it. But I'd love to hear from you guys. Comment down below some of your tips for collecting Pokemon cards. Let us know in the comments down below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, guys. Really hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to go and check out that other video I mentioned with the top five don'ts of, like, collecting Pokemon cards. That's well worth watching now. Hit that subscribe button there, guys. Stay safe. See you in the next one. Peace.